Hey everybody, it's Thursday. Um, I've been getting some questions about sources, things like that. Um, this, uh, I don't want to, what do I call it? This adventure with Scott Dillweed over at Power Hog. Um, real quick, first of all, Power Hog is a derogatory term, right? It's sort of like in Japan, they have a, um, a, a graphic novel. It's not a comic book. It's a graphic novel of a guy called Rape Man. So I don't recommend that brand, but okay. So the Power Hog definitely describes Scotty pretty good. Um, again, Scott, you might want to respond before I make assumptions and start digging in on you. I'm uh, doing my homework. But uh, this is Micro Alarm. You get a zoom into that. Yes, this is a catalog from 2014, uh, volume number 218. And I've been buying from these guys since 1995. And it's just a little small company in the industrial area right there in central LA. Vernon, uh, where's it at? Do they even put their thing anymore? Um, What's that? It's a God, what is it? It's got spearmint rhino and a Walmart. Otherwise, it's a fucking nobody. It's just a generic tent. It's like it's sort of like the 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 brothel of LA where you just um people just go there to do their business and then go back to their real homes. <laughs> it, but there's a there's a lot of inner cities like that in, in California and in, in uh I think it's called Inland Empire, I think if, if I remember right. But anyways, it's just in a little industrial area. It's over there by uh American Hi-Fi. Uh, which actually is in Vernon. Uh, American Hi-Fi is um, its not one of my favorite companies, but it's a hidden gem because they import all the same stuff that everybody else does, but they just badge it with some terrible badging. You might have heard of them. Uh, they have brands like DHD. Uh, they also have a brand called Nitro. Uh, they also have a brand called P uh, Performance Technique. And people like really like to dog their stuff, but if you open it up and you know what you're looking at, it's the same stuff as everybody else. It's just a, sh a shitty swap meet brand that you can buy direct from them. And they actually, if you, if you, again, you have to be choosy. You have to pick out what you what, what you know is good and what you think you can sell or rebadge or something like that. And they actually make some pretty good stuff. Unfortunately, I think they might have decided to close shop uh, for uh, because of COVID. Like I think the, the owner might be ready to retire, and it's easier just to take the loss or on paper anyway, and then just call it quits. Because I don't think anybody's going to buy that place. Because it's so low bar that you can uh, you just buy direct from China instead. So, but anyways, uh, let's see. Because again, to me, a, a no brand, literally no branding on it, is better than like say DHD or Performance Technique, just because of the stigma associated with it. But their equipment's good because they get it from made from the same place as everybody else does. Uh, yo, the this. Uh, by the way, if you go to microalarm.com, which is their uh, website, they have pivoted. They have pivoted into um, car parts. I guess there's it's more lucrative. So, But they still have lots of car audio and accessories left. And uh, you just got to email them, uh, which is sales at, uh, no, sales team. Yeah, sales team at microalarm.com. And some of the some of the deals in here are really good. So, but I'm going to go ahead and get right to that. I do like that they have a guide in the beginning to tell you what page everything is on. Like if you're looking for something specific, like grills or whatever. And then typically when the new catalogs would come out, you know these are sort of their specials or their hot sellers. Uh, keyless entry uh, with a siren. Yeah, that's an alarm <laughs> uh, for only eighteen fifty. And um, I remember when I first ordered from them, they have a twenty five dollar minimum order. And I had trouble filling it, so but uh, I don't anymore. But um, it, this was a great company to work with, and I want to share them. But before they, uh, the, the the fate is the same as uh, a bunch of other car audio electronics manufacturers and importers. So the biggest one was like little stuff like this, and this is a really great company to go with before you have enough volume to order from somebody like Metra. Or Skosh. Uh, by the way, Skosh are dicks. I'd much rather see you guys go with Metra. And if you actually have, uh, I don't want to say, you don't have to have a brick and mortar store, but you definitely have to have a, a web presence and uh, the, you know, like maybe a website. 
And a lot of times you can get net 30 terms, uh, like 500 or $1,000 from Metra. So just, you know, be established and then you might want to have an LLC or something like that just so that you have a DMB rating or something that they can look up to kind of prove that you're not just some asshole working out of your house, even though they gave me a $1,000 credit limit because I was just some asshole working out of his house. So um, uh, what I'm saying is, you know, opportunities are there for you uh, if you ask for them. So, But uh, right there, tons of those. I've bought tons of those. And that's your, this is your 100. They come in bags of 100, right? So it's 275 for 100. But if you buy a thousand, there you go. It's one dollar thirty-five per hundred, right? Sometimes they put it in there. Yeah, a thousand piece minimum, uh, and then you can get it for eight ninety-nine if you do ten thousand pieces, which sounds like a lot. But you go through these a lot, and nobody really stocks them because it's not worth like no store or electronics place or even Amazon really stocks them. So sometimes you can put them in little baggies. Like once you've given up all your cocaine habits, you can use old cocaine. Uh, baggies and put them in there and then a lot of times I just give them like when somebody buys a pair of coaxials um, sometimes I'll throw in the base blockers and then I'll throw in some of these as well and people are so grateful for them and a lot of times it's really useful to get people to come back just for those they go hey you got any more and you go well make a sale you know like you don't have to be a dick like a shop is uh, you know where they charge $40 for testing but it's just a friendly way for, to get people back uh, to you so not a fan of butt connectors but I do stock them because some people demand them uh, and then they also have the nylon clear ones. Uh, for a while, they were carrying some 3M stuff, but I think uh, 3M either sometimes gets expensive or they their requirements become a little too steep. It's, it doesn't become worth it for them to carry them. And so I know that uh, Metra carries 3M now. So uh, Micro probably doesn't anymore, but they get them from the same Chinese factory. Just one says 3M on it, one doesn't. So ring terminals, know what your ID is. Uh, and then the gauge wire size, and then it tells you the color code and things like that. So I still have tons of this stuff that I, you know, it'd be great to just post. Like on this one, uh, the mail bolt connectors. These are actually really uh, much easier to use than, uh, where are they at? Than these. I don't really care for these. And what's great, uh, oh, let me see. Let me finish that thought. I got to <laughs> I gotta work on that. Finishing a thought. So sometimes you can use these, but these come in like four different sizes. And typically these only come in one size which is why I like using them. And then typically they have a uh, red, blue uh, nylon connector, which determines the wire gauge size. So you can actually mix different wire gauge sizes because it's a still male, female. There. So here's the female, here's the male. And it just fits together to bullet connectors. I got a shit ton of these in little bags of, I think, 25 from the uh, closeouts at High Desert Audio, a.k.a. Rockford Corporation, uh, when they used to be into the accessories business. So if you guys need some of those, let me know. And I'll just, you know, I'll just include like a bag uh, with it on your next order or whatever. So, but uh, the biggest thing that I used to buy from these guys right here, two, 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 boop, 205. 205 is not 0.25. Okay. 0.205 is the magic uh, size that is on speaker terminals. Because it's not a quarter inch. That's what 0.25 is. 0.25 is a quarter inch. Don't want that. 0.205 is the one that fits. Otherwise, these are like gappy and you don't want that. So 0.205 is what you want to look for. And then they come in either red or blue. Red is for 22 gauge. This is actually incorrect. Blue is actually good for, uh, what is it, up to 14 gauge. So, uh, and that's what I order right there is the FB205. And I have thousands of them just, just for my own personal stash, just because I don't like being out of them. And uh, a lot of times when I have money, uh, you know, like some people on payday, they go buy liquor or whores or whatever. Not me. I buy fucking speaker parts. So the other one is the 0 0.110. This is the negative side of the speaker terminal on, on virtually every speaker terminal. Like a lot of times on the positive, remember positive is on the left, on a like a basic coaxial. The, the, the left side will be larger, which is the 0 0.205. And the right side will be smaller, which is the 0 0.110. Okay, just so you know. And then I'm sure these convert easily over to metric because, again, this is all um, metric standard. And then they convert it to imperial standards. So wire nuts are also very helpful. Uh, a lot of times when I get these um, refurbished amps in, uh, they'll include the original packet. And they they have all kinds of dumb shit that you, you're not going to use in the install, but they're good to keep. Like the screws, uh, the uh, uh, speed clips, those are always handy. And it's always good just to have these around when you're doing installs. 
whether it's at home or, you know, if you have a small shop or even if you rent a, a bay at another shop. So mm, these are always handy too. You don't realize how handy these are. A lot of times I use the, um, the quarter inch to go into the batteries right there. There's been a couple of drills where I got either free or for like five bucks and I don't have the original harness, but then I'll use a, a DC to DC battery charger that you can get off Amazon and you need little spades to go in there. And that's what those are good for. So, but also for other stuff that you run up, you want to have at least a hundred pieces of everything just so you have a good selection. So T-taps, I do not ever recommend these. These fucking suck and they're very unreliable. However, some people insist on them. And so if you're going to resell them, make sure you charge them a little too much than what you should. And, and you know, pack a bag, get a bag of each. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, and sometimes they'll have this. I, th I Yeah, this is the 3M. This is the remaining 3M. Um, this is the blue one, which it shouldn't be. It's, it's actually probably yellow, even though it says blue. Um, and I bought a couple of thousand of these. Uh, and then I ended up, that's, yeah, I got those. And then like the next week, I got the big pallets of stuff from Rockford, which had <laughs> more bags of these. And they're all genuine 3M shit. So not that it's any better. It's just some people, you know, demand. What is it? What somebody said, I like nice things. Like somehow this is a generic is not a nice thing, but a 3M one is a nice thing. This is the dumbest thing in the world. I'm sorry you don't know any better. So, but uh, again, a lot of times they'll have, they'll sometimes on these pages, they'll repeat uh, stuff mostly just to fill the pages. Um, other times, uh, it's it may be a slightly different uh, part, and then like if they if they run out of it, they don't want to print a whole new catalog, so they'll just give you the other one. So just be flexible. Again, the important thing is to get the job done, not necessarily what parts you use. So this is still leftovers from the 3M stuff when they had that, uh, the black cocking and the Velcro. So. And um, you, they, they may still have these. What you really want to do to just uh, don't be, I don't know, how do I say this? Don't be a petty little bitch. Um, you know, this is, this is adult stuff. Be an adult. It's going to cost money. Have at least $100 to spend when you go to these guys. And what you, what you do is you don't request a catalog. You, you look through these pages and then you email them back and forth and you say, this is what I'm looking for. What's your pricing on this? And then whatever it is, you know, pick pick something up. And then you say, hey, can you include a catalog, right? See, that helps them. And they're nicer to you when they do that. So uh, I think this is all just the, the genuine 3M shit, uh, which I don't really buy except for the tape. I buy the tape. So, and then I get the sleeve of 10 because it ends up being only $86, 86 cents per roll. And uh, that's the 3M 170. So, but you got to remember this pricing was out uh, a long time before Amazon and everything really became popular. And so I still like to support them. And so sometimes it may be slightly cheaper or the same price as Amazon, but I'll still buy from them. Because again, this is a very small business that has supported me and helped me grow. And it's, and it's, you're helping them whenever you, you buy from them. So just like when you guys buy from me, you, you help me and I thank you very much. And I, 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 you can't have too many friends. Okay. Put it like that. So that's the 3M double-sided tape, which is popular. And then of course the super thin double-sided tape, which is like more like a, you know, you, you've seen them, I'm sure. And then this is just CA, which is a little expensive for one ounce because you can get, I think half an ounce for five bucks under the Gorilla Glue brand at Home Depot and Walmart and stuff like that. Sometimes some places don't carry all of the products. So, but you want to look for it. Sometimes they have a clear glue. It's not CA, but it's a clear like hobby glue. And then, but you really want CA. CA hardens much harder. It's very, it's got a good shear strength on it. And the, and it's, it's been perfected. Oh, that was the other thing. I wanted to give you the, uh, my source on CA glue. Cause I, I consume a lot of it. And, uh, and, uh, I think you guys could, uh, benefit from, if you could get together otherwise, because, well, because my CA guy, it, it's a uh, easy bond out of California as well. And, uh, some of the stuff they have is really, really good deal. Some of the stuff is, is, uh, maybe marginal good deal, but, um, 
uh, again, I like supporting them. I think the only downside is that they have a $250 minimum order, which which even I had trouble meeting sometimes because I didn't think I would use that much CA or bottles or, uh, you know, uh, it's not activator, it's accelerator, accelerator and things like that. So, but I do now and I, and like, I think probably like every two or three months I order from them and I get like eight bottles of CA. These are big 16 ounce bottles and the pricing is amazing. So I think you guys, if you're going to be building speakers or even just, you know, hobbyists or even reselling, that's really actually a great way to go. Um, and it's a great service for people in your neighborhood because like for that same five bucks, they get a half an ounce at, uh, say Walmart or uh, Home Depot. You can give them a full ounce four or $5 and, and it will last them a really long time and you help them out and you made money. So that's what I like to do. So also their screw selection is really, really good. Most all of these are all, um, uh, black oxide, uh, which is a zinc. Um, and uh, they have all the different tips. This is the self tappers. Uh, this is the pointy ones that are typically used with the T top uh, truss head, which are used for like grills and things like that. Uh, or <laughs> if you're a shitty installer, uh, a ground. But um, typically, if you're going to use uh, that, you want to use a self tapper and then you want to use like a uh, star washer. Those are really good for grounds, things like that. Something, again, simple, small installs like. 60, 60 amps or less is th that's fine. Otherwise, you want to use a lug, which I get from uh, Copper State um, here, Copper State Nut and Bolt here in Arizona. But anyways, here's all. The, if you want the regular uh, drywall screws, these are drywall screws. For uh, installing speakers, I use. I actually like these oval heads a lot, but they're it, it's good for um, a good cosmetic finish, and I usually get them in uh, three quarter, and uh, they're good for like little things like speaker terminals. They just look nicer and they cost the same as the other screws. So that's what I get. But I actually get the regular pan head uh, sheet metal screws. And then I, what I do is I get just one inch, one and a half inch. And then they also sell them in two and three inch. So, but typically I go one inch, one and a half inch, and then I jump to three inch. So, and these are bags of 500 and uh, typically you want to order at least a thousand, which is two bags. So uh, also uh, um, the last, I think three or four years, Metra carries a good selection of screws now in their in, under their install bay brand, uh, which they didn't before. But um, again, uh, everything Metro, just about everything Metro carries is is uh, made by and imported by Larry Van Sickle over at Recoil Audio. So just so you know. So and then I always get a ton of these. I like the number eights, the smaller ones. And uh, I use those on all kinds of things. They're really very handy. If you can get the number six ones too, those are really good uh, because they also uh, work virtual for um, M4s uh, if you're using metric hardware. So again, here's a repeat of that other deal that you saw. It says they're blue, but again, when I ordered, they were yellow, which is what they're supposed to be. So maybe this is a clearance because they put the wrong boot on there. I don't know. So, and then these are kind of cool, the piggyback ones where you take out the old one, stab this in there, and then you can tap on that as well. Self mounts uh, for tie wraps. Uh, you put a sticky down and then it, you can use the tie wrap. Um, they have the regular cable ties. They used to carry 3M, but they found the same factory and then they just started buying directly from the factory and they don't say 3M on it anymore, but they are fine. The other one, instead of using these, is to use the tie wraps with the loop at the end, which are very handy. And then you can put a screw on them and then hold it down. It's a very cheap way for wire management. If you want to do some wire management, I'm not a big fan of wire management because my customers are poor. And typically I don't want to do something that costs me time and money and I'm not charging for. So if now what I do sometimes is I'll stock like loom and wire ties and then I'll go, give me 20 bucks and uh, you know, I'll just give you all the stuff and you can do it because it takes hours now. And I used to do that stuff in the semiconductor industry when I was building uh, these big tools uh, the size of minivans to polish wafers and stuff like that. So, but here's the pricing. I always get the heavy duty ones. Uh, typically when you get the at least 40 pound, I just ordered a bunch of these, the 50 pound ones, and I probably ordered uh, at least a thousand and at two bucks, two bucks a bag. Uh, now, uh, that's what they also told me was, uh, pricing may have increased of course, since 2014 and since COVID. So be patient with them. And, uh, you know, again, you, you, you want to have a good relationship. Oh, that's the other one, the snap grommets. Those are always handy. So there's better. 
And it's, it's just good to have those in your wire management. Uh, I have a couple places where I have wire management out there in the shop. There's the split loom, very affordable, very affordable. And then the black vinyl tubing, which uh, I think, I don't know, I'm not sure what that is, but they do have the heat shrink, which is nice. Um, and I think this is, yeah, this is just all black. I like to have red too, but it's hard to find a consistent source for the same material type. Like a lot of times you can find red, but it has like print on it, or it has the, the jizzy stuff that comes out, the glue. Again, it's hard to find, but, uh, and then and then when you do find a good source, they're expensive. So shop around is what I'm saying. And then of course the base blockers, 60V base blockers. Uh, this is the, what size, what value is it? It doesn't tell you. It's, it's that's probably four ohm at 600 Hertz. So a little math, that's probably like a 30 microfarad, 30 microfarad cap, maybe, I don't know. But I wanna find out, otherwise I have the uh, 99 microfarad, which is good for four ohm at 200 Hertz at 6 dB per octave, so. And I, yeah, that was another close that I got it uh, from, what was it BG Micro, which is another one of my sources that somebody turned me on to. Um, they're fantastic, I, but I think they closed their doors. Uh, but yeah, I bought literally two pallets of the base bloggers in the retail packaging for 11 cents a pair. And because if you order, I think it was like $350 at a time, you got free shipping. So, <laughs> um, you know, and I think they just meant it, uh, which again, I kind of burned a bridge with them by doing that. And I also burned a bridge at MCM by doing that when I, they had a bunch of passive crossovers. And again, the same thing is like, I go, well, what's the difference if I order a hundred versus a thousand? Like, you're still going to give me free shipping, right? And they're like, well, it turns out it's, it's cheaper for us to do a pallet. And I'm like, well, then I just saved you a bunch of money. <laughs> they're like, well, normally we just include two or three of them with an order. And I was like, well, it says free shipping. So, uh, but you know, if you're not making policy, you're not really uh, doing your job. These are great too. These uh, FM extenders. I'm not a fan of FM. And a lot of times in an install, I won't even hook up the FM. I want people to stream or use their phone or some other way. This FM is just fucking commercials. It's just gross. And then, or Christmas music. That's the other thing. So electrolytics. These are bipolar. These, of course, are for um, all kinds of Sultan bags of 10. Um, and you can pick up all your, your little, uh, yeah, 200 microfarad, 150, 147. These are all pretty standard sizes. And then you can mix and match them depending on what you're trying to do. So that's a whole other. I think I did a little bit on crossovers, but uh universal power antennas i don't ever recommend power antennas again i don't recommend fm uh, but if you do want that or the customer wants it then this these are good solutions so i do like these uh, the cheapy uh is this the one what is it yeah there's the amplified interior uh antenna again if you're really into fm like what are you doing like come on man Nobody needs an 83 Cadillac. <laughs> Just throw it away. Just throw it away. These are really good. I bought a ton of these. Um, I think they also have... Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, these are the... Who else sells these? Um, X Scorpion, uh, who I would normally buy from uh, out of Wholesale House. Uh, and again, these are all made by the same factory in China. Uh, they're all imported by the same people. Um, you just buy a different brand and then you stick it in the customer's car. Again, the customer doesn't give a shit. Um, they just want it to work. So make it work. But yeah, these are always good for the GM adapters to go to the um, aftermarket radio. And they have some, you know, specialty stuff. Whenever there's like, and a lot of times you don't even need it. Like I remember I was doing an install on a Maxima and Nissan had done a, uh, a, a two pole FM antenna. And I go, this is dumb. And so what I did is I just, I cut off the head and then I took one wire. Where's it at? Mm. Well, sometimes I just hack it. Sometimes I just take this and I cut it and you just splice the wires together and then you plug it in and it fucking works. So again, how much time do you want to spend on a fucking install? How, mm. how high quality do you want it to be? Do you want to sit there and solder every fucking wire or do you want to just twist them together so you get wire to wire contact and then crimp it? How crucial is the, uh, joint is what you, what you should really ask yourself. How much time do you really want to spend on that? There's a lot of neurotic guys that 
don't realize that they have OCD and I feel bad for you, but not that bad. And so I charge you guys extra, just so you know. Um, am I taking advantage of your OCD? More than anything, I'm just trying to get out of the get over the process of the deal quicker uh, because you guys are crazy and you don't even know it. So and I'm not going to sit there and fucking argue with you. Because emotion always wins, right? If anybody's ever had an argument with a woman, emotion always trumps logic. Placement antennas. So this is what they moved into was because a lot of this uh, vehicle specific stuff. Let's see, what is that? Wireless Bluetooth audio interface. That's a little expensive. Um, a lot of this uh, uh, vehicle specific stuff sells better. And there's, of course, better margin on it, which is why they're moving to a lot of that as well. Here we go. Here's some more FMM shit. So that's the Chrysler one. That's the Nissan. That's the one I told you about. It's a it's a two lead one. And so you plug in there. It's dumb. You don't need it. Just get one leg and you're done. So in fact, a lot of times if you just take this and you cut it and uh, you take a piece of 18 gauge speaker wire and uh, me, I'm six foot. So I just put my arms out on both sides and that's six feet, cut it. And then you put one end on the positive, one end on the negative. And guess what? That's That's what a radio antenna is. That's that's one of the reasons why radio antennas, FM antennas, I should say, are three feet long, because that's the most common frequency when you hit the wavelength at, uh, I think it's 99 megahertz, 100 megahertz, is three feet is the most common. That's why whenever you go into any market, any city, the, the most popular um, radio station will typically be right around 100 megahertz, 99 megahertz, something like that, because you have the largest distribution uh, for the for the dollar that you're going to pay for a license uh, for FM licensing. So just so you know, and that's because it's based on that wavelength. Uh, and then, of course, uh, three feet is good. But if you can do a, a multiple of that, which is six feet, there you go. See, and so what other times I, I do for an install is I'd, I'd run one three foot length underneath the dash one way. And then I'd run the other three foot length dash on the other way. And guess what? It works fucking great. So that's all you need for an antenna, just so you know. Antennas are not very picky. So, and, and if you really want to get cool, what they've done with cell phones lately is they do this pattern that looks like a, a Mandelbrot set where it's a, a like a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle. And so what ends up happening is that you have a chip that's this long or this or even a chip that's that small, like a one centimeter chip, but it's got a like a, a two meter fucking wire on it. And because it goes within, 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 and it's printed. And that's the way that you get really good Cell phone, uh, you know, you, you can't have a six foot, you know, slash two meter uh, antenna sticking out of your phone, right? That's stupid. But if you have a little chip that has a six foot uh, wire length, you're going to have better reception. So that's how they do that, just so you know. So, But I learned that in the Air Force and uh, in semiconductor because that was one of the, there it is. That's the one I like. I get a lot of those. And I always order 24 pieces or more because they, they're the cheapest. And that's where you can just take a piece of speaker wire and solder it on there and then plug it in and you're done. So I have seen fucking Pugsley over at, uh, was it Slangin? Ugh. He came over and did installs for me one time and I was like, I checked his work. Oh my God, it was like the shittiest work. And he had taken a uh, a resistor, tied it around a, uh, a, uh, a drywall screw and then screwed it into the the customer's receptacle on the back of the radio. Does it work? Yes. Is it terrible and ugly? Yes. So I don't recommend that. Sometimes you'll just do a wire too. That's the other way to do it. But uh, that's what a resistor is, by the way. It's a little coil of wire, a very long length of wire. So you can take a little tiny short resistor, plug it in there and it works too. So that's another hack. And again, that's really generous on the hack part. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, you can also use coaxial wire, too. Like, sometimes you'll find a, a deal on coax. Again, it's just a, it's just wire. It's just It just shares an axial. That's what coax means. Co meaning shared or two. So the other one I, I, I like is the uh, selection for AGU fuses. Um, they make up to 80 amp. It's hard to find the 100 amps, but you don't really want to use 100 amp AGUs, just so you know. Just because they make them doesn't mean they're good. Uh, what happens probably typically when I use the 100 amp is that they don't pop uh, or they and, and these are notoriously poorly made. The solder joints that go to the caps uh, come undone all the time. However, 
lots of people still use them and it's popular so it's important to stock them and they're cheap so stock lots of them because you will go through a lot of them so and then they have the other ones the low profile minis the ANLs it's a really good that comes see when it says blister like that that comes in retail packaging and all you do is just I, I just remove them all so but that's a really good price on an ANL fuse uh, AGC that's the old type like you see in the 70s vehicles uh, what's great is sometimes you'll get a fuse holder let me see jump ahead real quick Uh, anyway, I'll show it to you when I find it. It's um, it's a it's a it's a little wire loop with the AGC fuse holder. Those are really handy, especially when you want to do uh, like a small fuse. Like um, whenever I do installs, I would fuse the uh, remote turn on at like one amp or two amps, uh, just in case something pops. Uh, that that's what I use it for. And then also it's great because it it goes all the way up to thirty five amps. So it's a great, you know, if somebody just has an amp that you, you're you like, fuck, where's the fuse holder? It's almost worth it just to, you say, look, give me 20 bucks to install it and I'll give you the part for free. So that's a, that's an easy money maker. And they're like, free part? Yeah. Well, the, the part costs you like a dollar. So, and you're making $19 in labor. So you're doing fine. Uh, Mini A&L, also known as AFC. That's another good one. Uh, this also you can find from X Scorpion. Um, at 175 amps as well. And I think 175 is the max on that uh, fuse format. Otherwise, you have to jump to ANL. And ANL now comes in like 500 amp fucking fuses. And I get those from Metra. So regular ATC blade fuses, maxis. Maxis, again, they do make these in 100 amp, but I don't recommend them. Uh, I have a shit ton of 80 amp ones that I got from an MTX closeout here locally. These are the ones that I got. There we go. Uh, yeah, 10 to 12 gauge. So I bought a shit ton of those, but I think they're the same price as the blue ones, if I remember. Road Rage is their brand. Uh, they also have a brand called Moss, uh, meaning more. I like Moss Power, more power. And uh, so if you find any Road Rage or Moss Power, that's from uh, Micro Alarm. So I don't recommend these, but that's a really good deal on those circuit breakers. Sometimes for smaller uh uh, amperage values you can use these these are the ones that you typically find in an auto parts store and again look at that price especially when you compare it to retail and again it's good just to stock these and then again typically what i do for little parts like this they try to add a zero and then i give them a discount so i go look i'll do it for 20 bucks if you pay for the part i'll do free install so again they feel like they're getting something but they're they're getting a much better value than they would at a shop because a sharp sharp shop will usually charge double or triple of whatever you're charging because you're just working from home, which is fine. And what's funny is you actually make better margins than they do. Uh, and also, you're doing a tiny fraction of the volume that they're doing as well. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I think these are fuse taps, where if you want to tap into the uh, circuit breaker box, uh, sometimes if you don't have a, a remote turn on, you can tap up from the accessory wire or one of the accessory wires um, at the, the fuse block box, which I've done a zillion times. So... The other one is speaker terminals. I got you covered, but those are pretty good prices. And that's the cheapies that are like, you know, square and round. There you go. They don't handle a lot of current, but they're good for like, say, six by nine boxes or just cheapy woofers. And a lot of times, um, you know, the, again, here, if you buy 200 pieces, again, I have the better pricing than what they have, just so you know, because I've gotten so many surplus uh, closeouts. But um, uh, they're, they're really good to resell. So, because like if some high school kid or whatever comes in, he just wants to buy one, you're like, give me five bucks. And so they don't have to order online because then you need a credit card and all that other shit. You just get five bucks and you paid, you know, 20 cents for it. So good job. Uh, the deluxe ones, I don't like the twist T posts. I'd rather have the push terminals. And uh, when you find the push terminal ones, which I have, and I can show you where I get them from. I actually used to buy a lot from Goldwood out of California as well. Um and uh, sometimes Parts Express I'll buy them from because they have them on special or clearance. I'll show you some clearance uh, items that I got from them as well. And uh, But the push terminal ones are the same ones that you see on subwoofers. So th those are switchable, by the way. Uh, you can use them for one or the other. So if you have a dead subwoofer that you harvest them off of, you can often replace the little plug in there. It's just a little nut and a washer on the back. You remove that and then you can put a push terminal in there. So that's the other way to go. This is what I have a shit ton of and I can give them to you for half that price. So just so you know. Uh, the Road Rage of Adjustable Flange Port. Again, this is just a three inch, but it is $8, which is really nice. Again, I'm not a fan of round ports, but if you're going to get them or your customer wants them, then there's a good deal for them. 
Uh, six by nine closures. Um, this is not such a great deal, especially after shipping. So shop around on those. Um, also for a lot of enclosures, especially if you're going to buy by the pallet, which I highly recommend from Goldwood. Uh, Goldwood actually has a lot of good deals on these. And I'll show you some other vendors that have good deals on these as well. Uh, speaker grills. Again, pretty good deals. Shop around. Uh, always stock them. This, uh, these are the two piece. I like the waffle grills. Uh, and they also make the waffle grills in two um, gauges. They make a weak gauge, which is good for like PA speakers. And what's funny is a lot of times they're so weak, they actually vibrate uh, to, with the music. So I don't recommend them. But if you get them or whatever and you find an application that they're useful for, like especially if it's a giant mid-range, like an 8-inch, 10-inch, or even a 15-inch mid-range, like in, in, in Public Address Pro Audio, it's fine. But typically I like to go with the heavier gauge ones. And you can you can uh, shop around. Probably the biggest importer of uh, waffle grills is Pyramid. And again, they get them from the same factory in China as everybody else. So if, if they have them on sale, buy Pyramid. It's fine. You just take it out of the box and it doesn't say Pyramid on it anymore. Okay, so uh, old school Bakelite fuses. These are good too, snap grills. But however, what's better is if you buy the Neo magnets and then you just do a little countersink and then glue them in place. The Neo magnets work better, but if you, these are good for replacements. Uh, like if somebody brings you in an old home thing, I ended up, what is it? 80, yeah, I made 80 bucks here the other day. Some guy wanted to refurbish or replace a lot of the drivers that in his speakers. And I was like, yeah, I got, I got spare drivers that I had gotten from clearance at, uh, either parts express or whatever. And, uh, uh, it was, it was very profitable. It was great. So, and I was able to help him at an instant. He didn't have to wait for anything. And, uh, it was, it was great. So just so you know. Uh, I think I forgot to post the link for the uh, linear actuators, but compare pricing to what Larry is offering on Amazon. I will post that again in this. Latching relays, not a fan of those. I think a lot of times you can get those from an electronics uh, surplus place or, you know, and it's always good to have in your bookmarks when you're looking for electronic parts like Mauser and DigiKey and uh, Aero. And there's, there's several other um, Farnsworth, uh, which is now controls the MCM brand. Or they always have, they just are marketing it under their brand, which is Newark. Um, and then you can uh, connect with those companies as well. Again, not all of them. Sometimes, you know, for me, typically I only order when I can meet the minimum to get free shipping. Because for the most part, I don't need anything in a hurry. And so I can wait. And sometimes I'll make a post-it note of, say, next time you order from, you know, Parts Express, order these, you know, or whatever. And it's always good to have an inventory and it's like a small stock so that you can just be prepared. Again, most of this stuff is just being prepared. And then what's great is you end up looking like a fucking hero when you have the part and they're in need and it's like a Sunday and, you know, nobody else is open and they don't want to wait for Amazon. And, you know, and then that's when you can charge them 20 bucks for a $1 part. So if you guys really want to go cool, here's $4 for the fucking braided strap. Those also look cooler. These are for ground straps. So uh, the GM battery terminals, I'm not a fan of these. I'm a fan of just buying stainless hardware with the same... Uh, screw, which I think is a, uh, it's either five sixteenths or three eighths. I forget. Um, uh, and I just buy stainless bolts from, uh, copper state, uh, nut and bolt here locally. There's the exaggerated one. If you want to get the gold ones, uh, that's a 150 amp battery switch, which is sometimes nice with a little key. I've seen a lot of old school trucks that'll have that where they just, that's their alarm as they turn it off. And you can get it swear that it sets an alarm, but it also removes the battery connection so that they can't start the vehicle. It's kind of cool. Old school. Same thing here. This is more for RVs and uh, very affordable there. So like an RV um, that's been sitting for a while, you just take that off so it disconnects the battery. So that way, it, also if you um, you have really shitty cars and you have a parasitic drain, it's a, it's, a, it's a fix for when you don't have any other fixes or you don't have time to troubleshoot. So those are good too to stock for you. Pulse timer with relay, those are really good. Um, I found out that the TR7 that is sold by PAC, P-A-C, Pacific, uh, Auto, is it Pacific Accessory Corporation? Again, those are made by um, Edge, which is Recoil, which is Larry Van Sickle. And they actually have programmable ones. Uh, which are really great. And and uh, one of the brands that sells them is, like I said, Pack, and I'll, I'll put a link to them just so you can check them out. But I think uh, Recoil actually sells one. And uh, again, it's very fancy that you can actually program it to delay uh, a turn on or a switch depending on what you're trying to do. 
Um, if you're just turning on an amplifier, then they're good for that as well. So, uh, two channel line converter, not a great price for LOC. Uh, they used to sell a little generic one that was, um, it was just heat shrinked and it had some resistors on it and it was great because it had the connectors on it and I would buy those and those were like 50 cents. So then of course you're charging $10, $20 for them, you know, when you're doing an install. Universal steering wheel module. I have a whole bunch of these that Lightning Audio used to sell. Um, so if anybody wants to pick up the mantle on that, I'll give you the whole box for 50 bucks shipped and you can have all those steering wheel controls that you ever wanted. What's great about having those though is that they're really good for reference when you know, want to know what wires go where. So you not, not, you, see, you don't want to give them the harness, but the harness tells you what wires go where. So it's kind of a, a little uh, like having a library. Ground loop isolator, good price, but most of the time you don't need a group uh, ground loop isolator. These are fantastic, by the way. Road Rage. So Road Rage is their brand, but this specific line output controller to RCA, no remote turn on, uh, this was originally imported by uh, Aura in their base shaker project in the 90s. So you would get this and you would get a small class D uh, 100 watt amp and two Aura base shakers. They also sold the package under the Alpine base engine. Uh, again, it was this exact one, which is like a little steel box. Here's the knob and here's the, here's the ears for mounting. But these are great because it's a line level input, but you use a volume control. And again, they're only $6.99, uh, which makes them really universal. I still stock these. Sometimes they're handy. And and they're, it's, because you, you, you can take just an LOC, right? You can take just an LOC and then add a, a 10K pot or a 50K pot to it. That's the same thing. However, sometimes people like having a big box like that and they prefer having it all in one package. So uh, again, that's just another option. Uh, and that's ASTRLC, so. Uh, what is that? Flip down monitor, 149. Again, not everything is, um, this is just an inductor, by the way. Sometimes you put an inductor on the power side, it's, uh, uh, it, get, it gets rid of noise that you might have. Again, that's a Band-Aid, you don't really wanna use that. Uh, the chime thing, again, you don't need that. Uh, that's so that you keep the chime. I'd rather not have the chime at all. And so I just, I hack it and go straight into it. Antenna isolator, same thing if you're getting um, noise through your antenna. This just adds a, a one-to-one, what is also called a Balon transformer. Uh, it just decouples the signal. So a lot of this stuff gets into PAC, PAC, um, that they import for them. And then again, PAC is made by uh, Recoil or uh, imported by Recoil, and then they do the packaging and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, we've seen this before. 80 amp battery isolator, that's good. We were actually doing those today for Larry. So these were pulls from uh, something. I, forget, I These are all dumb relays, meaning they don't have the little smart chip that turns them on and off only when the um, primary battery is fully charged. Um, but he's going to resell them. And so the, what we're doing is we're debadging them. So we take off the old wires. These are brand new, so they're fine. They're 80 amp. And then we'll take that sticker off. We take the, the, the unwanted terminals off. Uh, wipe them down and then we we're gonna put all those so these are all the ones that we've already processed and this is just something that Sherry can do at home so which is nice it's very helpful for the team there at recoil all this pack stuff you can see see there's the pack level controller and it's actually more expensive than this one which is dumb but pack needs to make their money too and this one is, is imported directly by uh, micro so I really like that one, especially for the price. And especially if you don't have any other options. So uh, let's see, where's the TR7? TR4, TR7. Universal trigger model, this one's programmable, this one is not. Um, again, you, you can buy those actually off of Amazon under the uh, Recoil brand. Not, oh, that, that, these are it, yeah, non-adjustable ones. Price went up, I used to get them for 56 cents each, they were fucking awesome. And this is just a, it's a, it knocks down the signal uh, for line level uh, conversion. They used to carry the Navone products as well from uh, Richard Clark and, and uh, David Navone of uh, AutoSound 2000. And there were some Navone products that used to be in the catalog, but I think they finally got rid of them. Uh, a preamp line driver, four bucks, not bad. 
Uh, let's see what else. Noise filter. Again, that's the same as the ground loop isolator. Same thing as that. So know what you're buying, people. So, but the, uh, if you are going to buy a GLI, that's a good price. Mm, six foot. How long is that? Female. Radio doesn't say. Looks pretty long though. It's just a little uh, converter that you can convert to a coax antenna. So, and yes, you can use a big TV antenna for FM if you want. Uh, again, the radio signal doesn't care. It just looks for the broadest signal that it can catch and uh, gives that to you. 99 cent fans, pretty rad. Adjustable line out converter. This is the other one that I used to buy, but typically most people just turn them all the way up. More screws. TV brackets. That was the other thing I used to buy from these guys was TV brackets. Sometimes you can find clearance too on that stuff. Again, always be looking at the clearance stuff from uh, Parts Express. Port tubes. I've got a shit ton of those. Again, 99 cents. Uh, six, I think it's six inch diameter. Yeah, six inch inside diameter and then a five inch height. And what these are really great for is, you just, I mean, of course, these are made for bandpass. But what you can do is put them in the box so that you have this outside that looks uh, cosmetically, a please, uh, cosmetically pleasing. And then you can extend it with PVC. So that's another way to go. General cables. I like these. Uh, this I don't like the steady. I like the flashing ones. So and these are three volts. You just got to add a little resistor to them, and they're good. That's the cheapest um, car alarm that I've installed. Where when you turn off the car, it's it use a relay to switch it directly to the battery, and then it just sits there and blinks. So and most of the time, an amateur will not bother a car that has a blinky light. Just so you know. Uh, oh, TFT monitor, just a regular monitor, $59. Multifunction. I also get the, this is where I got the soldering iron from. See, look at that, 275 for a fucking door actuator. That's fucking great. These metal straps are great for all kinds of things, uh, including wire management, uh, box mounting, all kinds of other stuff. You can also buy this in a spool from uh, Home Depot. I think it's called um, Plumber's. I don't want to call it tape, but I think it might be called plumber's tape or uh, plumber's leash or something. It's lashing. I don't know. I forget what the name of it is. So uh, let's see what else. More more port tubes. Uh, extending range. Generic RCAs. Those are always good if you want to solder your own. And then more port tubes. We've seen that before. Here we go. ATC fuse holders. I really like these a lot too. And I usually get the... Uh, the 10 gauge are good to work as um, small amplifiers. Uh, and a lot of times this is real copper too, so which is really great. And then uh, the 18 gauge ones I get for, like again, the remotes and things like that. Uh, that's the waterproof version. Uh, this is the maxi version, which is usually 8 gauge. Yeah, this is 8 gauge. Uh, it's just a higher amperage. It goes up to 80 amps. So, and this is actually what they include in the, uh, if you guys remember, 6 gauge copper from Skosh. At Walmart, that's that's what that is. So, same thing. Uh, again, I get a ton of these. That's what I use right there. That was the one that I wanted to show you. That was AGC uh, uh, small glass fuses up to 35 amps. Not that you want to use 35 amps with 18 gauge. So, but it's there. Panel mount ones. Those are fun. Uh, always good to have if you want to do like a discrete install. Also good for replacements on when you get home audio stuff. Good for that too. Uh, heat shrink by the roll. That's the way to buy it. And then this is where it gets into a bunch of car parts. So, but um, their margins are better on these uh, ignition modules and stuff like that. But oh, that was the other one. These were really good too. Uh, yeah, dollar seventy-five. That was actually cheaper than what Larry was selling them to me wholesale from the Hooker uh, closeouts. Not that Hooker. There used to be a brand called Hooker Audio out of Texas, and uh, Larry was the importer on that. And the guy bailed on like 40 grand worth of debt and so little old me ended up buying virtually all of the rest of the, the inventory and making small payments every week to Larry so uh, that was one of the first deals that we became friends on so some of these blocks are not the best deal but sometimes they are some I like uh, ordering these at only four dollars each uh, zero gauge in four gauge out and they used to carry them in uh, gold and also the uh, matte nickel um, sometimes you can actually find them on sale at Parts Express as well under the P3 brand, which is Platinum. Uh, it, that's the name of the uh, brand, um, and I think, which I think was a spinoff or a sister brand of Tiffany. 
because uh, I think they got in trouble with, for using the name Tiffany. So again, just general fuse blocks. This is the Moss Power uh, brand. They don't even advertise the brand. So here you can see it, Moss Power. Platinum, which is just the nickel finish, and then you got the gold. So again, we saw that before. This is a 200 amp version. I'm going over the pricing. You can, of course, you can pause the video to get what you want. These are good pricing, but I don't like these end up, um, the acid underneath on the battery does, is not nice to them. It's a cheap plating, but they look cool. And sometimes that's what people want for now. And you cannot beat that pricing. So th that's just as affordable as the, the ones at Walmart, which I like. The um, They used to be under the Schumacher brand which used to make uh, battery chargers, but I think they, uh, Walmart bypassed them and they just import them directly from the same manufacturer. So, and now it's like a like a great value brand or whatever. So, these are really popular. Again, I still buy these from uh, Parts Express a lot because they're heavy and then I'll buy like 10 pair at a time and Parts Express still does free shipping if you buy $100 worth of shit. So, I buy $100 worth of shit. So, And it's not that, you know, like I'm doing something magical. Like we got a ton of those from uh, Orion too. Uh, they were only the negatives. <laughs> so I ended up having to buy just positives and then I'd match them up and sell them for, you know, $20 or whatever. Uh, see. Oh yeah, these are really good. Uh, $2. That's what they should cost from China with shipping and everything like that. And these are POP package, meaning retail packaging. And what I do is I, I would, uh, and these are, uh, I think the nickel ones. Yeah, solid brass, uh, zero to four gauge distribution, or not distribution, but um, what is it called? Reducer is what they're really called. And so I'd remove the uh, retail packaging and they put a little Moss Power sticker on it and remove that. Presto, no brand. And it stays my secret. I still have tons of these too, the zero gauge ones. Uh, and sometimes you can actually uh, negotiate a better price. I used to get these for $1.75 each, which is the four gauge price. Uh, but I just buy the zero gauge ones and I'd buy like, I go, how much for 50? And I'd buy 50 and they'd give them to me for like $1.75 each and, you know, and then 50 in gold and 50 in platinum. And then sometimes what I do is, it's not, again, it's not platinum, it's a nickel finish. But uh, I use um, the gold for the positive and then the nickel for the negative. So these were a really good deal, but I think they're out. So, and I think they raised their prices on them. But I used to, this is what I used to use for, um, there's an old video that I made about a conversion for a PPI amp, uh, art, uh, M series, uh, M and AM series. Uh, that I converted and this is what I would terminate with and then I would use one of those uh, fuse loops to, uh, for this thing and then I'd use forks again it just gave it a little fancier way and to kind of freshen up the amp uh, these are helpful handy small little amplifiers if you just want to add a pair of speakers again that's what they should really cost um, and typically you can find them on um, AliExpress for about that price but a lot of the AliExpress stuff has been more expensive so this has always been a good source it's not two by 75 it's two by like 50 it's a uh, it's only a 10 amp fuse it's 100 watts so the other one is these cheapy tweeters i saw a shop here in phoenix give these away for free um as as uh, as a deal like if you come in and make a whatever 20 dollars purchase we'll give you free tweeters so and again once you remove them from the packaging nobody knows that it says road rage which again is not really the great the greatest brand the greatest thing to promote here's the 200 amp uh relays uh, I've been selling them for 30 shipped. Uh, this is uh, 33. It's, it's pretty competitive. So, and we still have some of those left if you want. Sometimes we have the 500 amp ones as well in stock. This is also where I'd get these. These are great before I, uh, the LS right there, the four gauge ones. Four gauge black, four gauge red. Uh, a lot of the ring terminals. I also like the uh, eight gauge ring terminals, which were, which were tough to find at the time. Now you can buy a lot of this stuff from Metra, but at the time, this is where I would go. And, uh, you know, you buy a bag of 100 and you get pretty good pricing. So. Shit, we're almost going on an hour here. And I'm only in the middle of the fucking catalog. Um, I'll just start doing some briefing stuff. I like their version. A lot of times them they, they were having, yeah, see here, 49 cents, dude. For a six foot, um, this is the nickel and then this is the gold. Again, no performance difference. It's just cosmetics. So, and these are closeouts. They got them, you know, they're just a generic. Sometimes they're packaged, sometimes they're not. You're going to take them out of that shit anyway. 
And also, just so you know, the video cable is the same as the RCA cable. So if you have a, a video cable with uh, yellow ends, it does the same exact job as this. So just so you know, inside is copper or aluminum, whatever wire, and it does a good job. Use it. Uh, window tending stuff, more RCA stuff. They actually sell their own uh, power wire kits. Um, they used to sell the RCA stuff by the spool. Yep, high-end RCA. Oh, this is some orange stuff. This is uh, from, again, I think this is from Larry from uh, Edge Recoil. Um, they That was their Strike Series uh, RCA cable that they used to sell at Lightning Audio. So, same thing here, all the RCAs. Uh, oh, did I... I don't, did I pass the, this is some of the bullshit stuff that's a little overpriced. I don't buy it, but it's good to look at once you get the catalog and you know, whatever fits your needs there in your market is what you should get. A lot of this stuff is gone, but these were a really good deal at the time. So again, we used to debadge these and sell them for, I think $40 a pair. And then uh, we had the four by sixes and the five by sevens. Again, they're just cheapy hole fillers. For people that want to be cheap and you're like, okay, you just want something. Okay, how's 40 bucks a pair sound? Sounds a lot better than uh, the car stereo shop that wants $100 a pair. You know what I mean? So you just want to, oh, and then they have all the Metro harnesses. All those, and they usually have really good pricing. But again, if you just need one little harness, uh, Amazon is really good for that. Speaker baffles. These are from American International. I have tons of these and they are very, very useful. Also the spacers, 6x9 converters. Uh, just the generic trim rings, the panel fasteners, uh, Ford, um, uh, DIN removers, head removers, Ford Mazda removal tools. Well, some, somebody's got an emergency. Carpet. These are really good for carpet, too, this place. Um, if you want to buy small amounts in different colors, um, you can. You can buy by the roll, but then shipping gets uh, pretty expensive. So I recommend just the little three-foot and four-foot sections that you can use to... I don't want to say spot weld, but patch up a little place in the factory carpet. So uh, they do sell wire, but the, the price of copper varies so much. They tell you to call in. Typically, the one that I buy is this guy, which is a, a thousand uh, at 18 gauge. And this is actually better quality than the Metro stuff uh, that I get from Metro. I like the feel of it. Um, uh, the wire seems a little have a little more copper content, even though it doesn't really matter. It's just uh, I use this for... Um, speaker to RCA type of connections or even just interior speaker wires, it's fine. Um, or even for small subwoofers, it's fine. So they do sell primary wire, which is like four gauge, zero gauge, all that kind of stuff. CCA, copper, all that stuff. Um, again, you got to call for pricing. Sometimes they might have closeouts. The other one I would use them for is the relays. All kinds of power diodes, frequency counter, door lock polarity. Universal remotes, those are really handy. Actually, when people lose their remote and you're like, well, what does the dealer want to charge? And you're like, $400. You go, how much does the shop want to charge? And you're like, $200. You're like, I'll do it for 100 So and then you just program it and you make 100 bucks. So, good job. Sockets, I'm not a big fan of sockets. I like to just use the quarter inch um, and use my own wire. But if you do a lot of these, then sometimes those are handy. Um, resistors. A lot of times you can use those for all kinds of reasons. And I think here, was it having it still? Easy, that's the easy mount. Blue steady, red steady. They don't have the blinky red anymore. They have the blinky red one that I, I used to buy a lot of. So, uh, economy door locks, very good margins on those. Compact, the stubby ones I think are only in certain cars and things like that. And then you can buy a four pack. And then they have, this was, this was what used to be one of the only places that would sell like window switches. Uh, and it's a generic window switch uh, aftermarket thing. The other good one I do a lot of uh, would sell is the, the, the trunk release, which you can also use as a door popper, which they also sell. But um, this can be used for the same thing. Uh, it's a lot cheaper if you just use that uh, instead of this one. So just so you know, 12 channel, I have no idea what that's for. And I would no idea what 12 channels is worth. What's What we did used to do in the 90s is we would take uh, a lot of these, um, like the window uh, roll-up module and things like that, and we would do other home automation stuff before home automation came out with their own stuff. And that's all they do. They would base everything off 12 volts because it's already an, uh, a product that they can pull off the shelf 
And then you put it in a fancy case and you put, what's it, Brim Security or uh, whatever, some some sort of security brand uh, that people trust and in a white box and presto, you're, you're a magician and you can charge $1,000. So if they can do it, you can do it. Yeah, I think these are the spa ones. I think this is the universal. They used to sell some spa ones. These are very uh, good too for home or car security, the pressure switches. Uh, like when somebody steps on a panel, they can trigger an alarm and things like that. And the window power switches, those were uh, at the time very rare. You could not find those. You can find these a lot on uh, Amazon now. There's the spa. Uh, spa standard window kit, 109. That's about what you can find them for. So about everywhere. Uh, the illuminated toggle switches, very handy. And also I used to buy a shit ton of the just the regular toggles. Those are very handy. And then they also sell the micro uh, toggle as well, which is good for like, um, the, you can use them for the valet switch, uh, the, which they also have, the which is the push button. Again, it's just a switch. Uh, how you use it is up to you. And then the pin switches for um, doors and uh, hoods, things like that. If you're using them in security applications, they also have the mercury tilt switch, which is great. Um, and another different mercury tilt switch, which all it is is just a little vial in a vacuum tube that has two terminals at one end. And then when it turns the, the, the mercury towards the terminals, it shorts it. So sometimes you want an open, sometimes you want a short. More buttons, more switches. This was uh, really a great source for these batteries too. The uh, 12 volt slim al uh, alkaline batteries for uh, remotes, things like that. You know, very, very cheap, very, very cheap. Sometimes this would eat up all your profits in the shipping. So there's a mechanical hood lock with an ignition kill, which is really just a switch. It would sell little things too. This is their brand, little leather case for it. A lot of this stuff is outdated. You know, it, the, the so many imports come from uh, China now that they've done away with a lot of this stuff. But sometimes you can get it on closeout. I like the mini ones. Uh, I wouldn't buy 100 pieces, but I would buy little ones. Those are good for, we did some of those in... Uh, 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 home audio uh, security. So, uh, and even do the, the bigger sirens because they're louder. And then the air horns, of course. Burp, burp. They just use a little uh, tiny compressor that spins, little DC motor, and it runs air through the thing. What else? These are good. Uh, the socket adapters, of course, a little tiny thing of uh, CA. Uh, these are good. These were a really good deal. So if you want to have some sort of uh, cable clamp or cable hookup, battery hookup, uh, I've bought and used a lot of these. Um, they're just, it's just a battery cable, but it's 99 cents. See, and it's 10 gauge. It's copper. So, and to them, it's worth more selling it that than it is copper scrap. So, uh, and they do sell pyramid power supplies. Those are linear power supplies. You can also buy the same exact power supplies for Nippon America, which is um, the parent company to Audio Pipe. Uh, this is just random stuff. I like these. These are very handy, but I think you can get these from Harbor Freight now. Back then you couldn't. These are good. The pickle grabbers. I, I usually buy eight or ten of these. These walk out of my shop all the time. People love these. So sometimes they go, well, you can buy it for ten bucks. You can buy it for twenty bucks or whatever. Uh, or sometimes, you know, if I do a job or whatever, I go, I'll include it. You can have it, you know, as a gift. So great stocking stuffers as well. So and they, they do sell generic uh, black ABS and then they also sell the waffle board, which has um, it's a it has a, a matrix of sorts. And then you can use that for measuring and cutting and all that stuff, depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, they do have the genuine Klein bits, but I uh, typically they're too expensive. And so I just buy the Harbor Freight ones. Uh, sometimes they're good for the three inch and six inch bits. Uh, again, it varies on price. Sometimes these are not worth unless you buy 10 at a time through Amazon. Uh, hot glue sticks, they have them in clear or black. Very good. Uh, good price on clear, good price on black. Uh, uh, the skew driver. This was came out in the 90s. This is really good. And then I like to get the little, um, the removable handle one. I don't know if they have that one. And then you can drive it with a um, uh, drill. Those are good too. Uh, the other one I use is the noise killer. This is the original noise killer that you found from um, Lightning Audio. Uh, I think I did a little bit on that. Um, it just adds mass to your door panel. That's all it does. 
This is really good pricing on this one, though, too. $4 for a fucking aerosol can. Great for box um, carpet, things like that. And, of course, the glue guns, uh, you go through multiple of those, though. You, you end up leaving them on, and they burn up and all that kind of stuff. I don't recommend this crimp tool. Uh, this is actually uh, marketed by a couple of different companies. Uh, impacting sucks, and this thing always breaks. And so it's better just to get the big, what look like a uh, bolt cutter type of crimpers, uh, or even a, um, a hydraulic crimper that's that you bolt to the, the bench, and then you uh, just crimp terminals while you're doing that. Again, I'm actually a fan of the set screw ones because you can use them over and over again. Uh, door upholstery removers, these are really good. I usually stock a couple of these. The, again, those those uh, walk out. The horseshoe clip. Some people still have uh, manual windows, and so it's important to have one of these tools to so you can remove it. And then the the hardest part, putting it back on, and that's what you do with that. So uh, do, do, do. I get a lot of these too for um, a Phillips on this side, a flathead on this side. You buy twelve of them; they're only uh, ninety nine cents each. You cannot beat that price. It's a fucking great price, and. Um, uh, you know, those walk off as well, but they're great for adjusting gains. So that's what I use. Uh, good. This is good for if you're doing cable stuff. Uh, strippers, they get into other types of uh, wire testing, fishing. You can, That's a really good price on that one on a fishing tool. Uh, bean connectors, not a really big fan of bean connectors, but they use them in uh, different applications for uh, data and uh, security, things like that. Here's the solder. That is probably not the same price anymore because uh, typically market price has has doubled and nobody's even noticed. It's like $60 a kilo. So that's fucking expensive for solder and nobody has complained but me. <laughs> so, but you can get a pound of solder for 15 bucks. That's a really good deal, but that's only if you buy 12 rolls at a time. I buy that much, so I'm not worried about that. But um, I also get the Solomon. Um, I bought several over the years. Uh, but you can buy the replacement iron, which the element in here that gets hot is in there. And then this is the variable tool. It has a little DIN connector, as you can see there. So this is that right there, which is only 15 bucks. That's a little high. Sometimes you can find them for 10 bucks. But again, if I'm buying everything in one spot, it's not a big deal. And then, of course, the biggest one is you can buy new tips. And depending on what kind of work you do, you can buy multiple tips. I personally... Uh, for a long time, I would just buy these from Harbor Freight. They were giving them away for free, and you just you burn it up and throw it away. So, and then so, <laughs> I'm so frugal, I would actually cut the cord and then use the cord for something else. A uh, speaker wire that's better for that, uh, at least because you know it's copper. So, they get into some of the home theater stuff. This stuff's not such a great deal. Um, sometimes you want to just buy wire nuts. Sometimes they have deals, and they again, they used to vary their catalog whenever they were more active, but now they've moved into. Um, Oh, yeah, that was the other thing I used to get these because they didn't have any branding on them. Uh, so I could resell them for like 20 bucks. And uh, let's see what else. That's kind of expensive. Uh, the uh, gender benders, uh, the barrel connectors, those are really good. You want to get nickel to nickel right there. Let's see, female to female. Yeah, 26 cents. The best price I found on them, I used to buy them from DBL, which was a local electronics distributor, for like 13 cents each if you bought 1,000. So, that, and that's what I buy now. Um, again, they're just handy. Um, sometimes you want to, it's like a two to, uh, no, it'd be like a five to one ratio of male to male versus female to female. The female to female ones are more popular, uh, because the male to male one is just basically a really, really short RCA. So, uh, more home audio stuff or security or yeah the wall mounts and stuff like that this this stuff is really price competitive now not in this thing but you can get these for super cheap now from lots of places um depending on what you're trying to do these are handy too a lot of times so again watch your pricing uh sometimes i'll get these for like computer monitors and things like that when i'm i used to do all kinds of work and then now they're getting into uh, old school car distributors and shit like that but um, I used to do all kinds of electronics installs and uh, um, just whatever people, you know, when you go to Geek Squad and Geek Squad's like, yeah, we can do it for $500. And they're like, Pat, what are you going to do? And I go, give me $150 and some pizza. And they're like, okay. So, um, again, all you have to do is be cheaper than the other guy. But um, contact Micro Alarm. Again, the best thing is to not call any of these numbers and not go to the website. But to email them, and I'll put the link of the email in the description 
which is sales team at microalarm.com. So I love you guys. Thank you for watching.